want to talk about moisturizing. Uh, very important, not only during chemo and radiation, but something you should really start when you're young, which I didn't, so this is what I deal with. Um, and boy, I have a lot of product here. <laughs> I really envy those women that can get by with just a couple of products and that's it. Um, but I never did do any moisturizing. I never did anything to my skin. And so now I'm really regretting it. And that's my one advice to, to those of you who are still young. Take care of your skin now. Start now. Okay, so. Before I actually was diagnosed with chemo, I had just started getting into the Korean skincare regimen, um, you know, like the 10 step thing. Um, although I didn't do 10 steps, I just did what I could based on what I had on hand. And so basically what I'll do is I'll double cleanse my face. You know, I take off makeup, double cleanse my face. Um, then apply toner and when I, at the time I didn't have it, but now I do essence and, um, oh, what do you call this stuff? I can't even think of what you call it. Oh my gosh. Um, you know what? Let me go get my handy dandy chart. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, just one of those brain freeze chemo fog moments uh, what I did was I actually went to Soko Glam and I printed out just um, a list of each of the steps so that when I was new to this I would have it I, I even laminated it at work and so that I could keep it in the bathroom and it wouldn't get all you know ruined from the moisture in the bathroom um, so I do the S, you know, after the toner, I do the essence and the serum. Um, the eye cream, very important to these old eyes. <laughs> and then even though I've always had oily skin, I started doing a moisturizer, which you will find out why that's really important. Um, I've always had to moisturize my elbows, very rough, dry elbows. Especially when I lived in Oregon. In Oregon, they were like sandpaper dry. Here in Hawaii, it's not as bad. There's more moisture in the air. But, you know, if you live in a dry area, then you might have, you might already have dry skin problems, and then chemo and radiation is just going to exacerbate it and make it worse. Um, so that's why I say moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. Very important. Okay, so what I start with, um, in the morning before I shower, when I'm getting the water nice and hot, I do a dry brush routine. And I started this probably about a year, year and a half ago. And all you do is run a brush over your skin and it, and it actually does have a long handle to it. I just didn't leave it on for the video. So you can get your back, it feels so good on the back. Um, I get my legs and it just helps to exfoliate all that dense skin that's built up from the day before and you do that before you get in the shower and it just feels really good but it, you know it like I said it helps exfoliate all the dead skin um, now I didn't bring out all of my stuff out of the shower because I've already taken my shower and everything's wet in there and I didn't want to deal with drying it off and everything <laughs> so I'm just being lazy but I do a two-step cleansing routine and they tell you the first one is an oily cleanser and the second one you know, to remove all the dirt and the grime and the makeup and everything and the second one is a water-based cleanser I have no idea how you tell what is what because it seems like when you read the ingredients they're all water-based cleansers so I don't know how to tell and I just do two cleansers. So one of the ones that, you know, I brought the ones that I keep on my sink top for after work when I'm taking off my makeup. Um, 
and the first thing I do is eye makeup and this from um, the body shop chamomile what glasses sorry uh, chamomile sumptuous cleansing butter this is the best eye makeup mover I've ever found it's uh, coconut oil based I think it smells it's a very light light scent um, you can barely smell it and I don't know if you can see I've been using it for a couple of months now two or three months maybe longer and I've barely dipped into it so it's well worth it um, but what I do is I wash my hands so I have clean hands I take one finger and then I rub it in I'll take another finger and then rub it again and then I'll switch hands and then do the other eye and again twice and then I proceed to wash my face the first thing I usually use is the simple micellar gel wash um, and it just it's just kind of like a clean fresh thing and it takes off all my face makeup and everything and everything I use is cruelty free um, I do want to start getting into more of a vegan routine but everything at this point is cruelty free and uh, then after I do all the makeup cleansing I'll go in with one of my other cleansers one I have is yes to cotton it's this um, what do they call it anti-pollution oxygenated foaming cleanser and it has these little bristles on it and all you do is you pump and the foam comes out here and you just scrub it on your face and so it kind of scrubs it away at any dirt and like it says pollution and everything that's on your face from the day so I like that I also have this found activated charcoal cleanser and I like the ones that are in a pump that's really nice like this one you have to open it up and squeeze it and then hit the thing in the bottom to get it closed I, I'm not as crazy about that I would much rather have a pump and so this I do I only do two cleansers though I don't do all three of them but I do the eyes and then I'll do two cleansers on top of that so after I've got my face clean and whether I do it you know this that's my pretty much my nighttime routine in the shower I just do two cleansers you know after I wash my body and um, before I rinse out the conditioner in my hair I'll wash my face and I'll do two cleansers and one of the cleansers I like is actually Jeju Lava and you can get that at the face shop I do use their toner and um, lotion as well I, I think I bought a set when they were on sale one time and really love it the cleanser especially the cleanser I just love uh, it just kind of makes my face feel fresh that's usually the one I use as the second one the second cleanser in the morning because my face just feels kind of alive and rejuvenated so after I have cleaned my face um, after I'm out of the shower in the morning and I'm all dried off the very first thing I do when my hands are all clean is I do the toner and this one is the Jeju Volcanic at the face shop and I just pat that on everywhere and then I do the Etude House Wonder Pour uh, because I have very large pores on my nose and my chin uh, and right in this area I'm always seeking anything that will minimize pores and I would heard good reviews about this um, but now I am using it in conjunction with this Eliz Elizaveca Elizaveca Witch Piggy Hell Pore Control with Hyaluronic Acid and this is my serum that I use and so this after the Wonder Pore Essence I don't even do a drop I just take an empty dropper I don't want to waste it <laughs> and I rub it down my nose and across my chin and that's it and then I'll rub it in just in the area that I need to and I swear this stuff has been magic it's like halved the size of my pores in just a couple of weeks 
So this is definitely a rebuy for me. I love this stuff. Um, I'm about halfway through it in about three months, I think it is. So that's not too bad. Um, after the serum comes the eye cream. Right now I'm using Mario Badescu. Mario Badescu? Mario Badescu. And it's a hyaluronic eye cream. I guess this hyaluronic is supposed to be really wonder cream now. Um, but again, it's one of those things you only use a little dab, so it goes a long way. This feels a little bit greasy to me. I don't know that I'd rebuy this one. I may go back to the e.l.f. I remember I had good results with the e.l.f., but I can't really remember for sure. So I may actually, when I get low on this, try a comparison, you know, do like one eye and one eye. I don't know. After the eye cream comes the lotion. Very, very important because even though I've always had oily skin, I mean, when I was a teenager, I broke out like crazy. Even as an adult, I broke out like crazy, you know, into my 30s and 40s, practically into my 50s. Um, and then I started with the chemo and then the radiation, I started getting dry patches. And it's like, wow, I've never had these before. And even using the lotion, I was having dry patches. So it, it's very important that you uh, um, hydrate your skin. So I've got a couple that I use. One is the Jeju Lava. And this is my favorite. This is the one I really love. And then the other one I got is Pacifica Dreamy Youth, Dreamy Youth Day and Night Cream. And I like this one too. Um, usually I put this one on at night and I'll do the Jeju in the morning. And I don't know why, maybe because it says dreamy youth day and night. I, I don't know, but they both feel really good. And so, and that's it for my face. Um, from there, then I lotion up my body and then for the face I go to makeup. Um, or at night, you know, that's bedtime. <laughs> So, for, oh, you know, and I do, I went through a phase where I was doing the face masks, and I haven't done them in a couple of months now, and I keep thinking, oh, I should do one again, and I haven't. Um, so, I've got these sitting around, but some of them feel so good when you're done, and, but I never keep track of which ones feel good and seem to help anything. Um, I remember a Yes to Tomatoes that I really liked. The scent was fabulous. I love the Yes to Tomatoes scent. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do one of those today. It's Sunday. Okay. Um, now, I said I had really dry elbows. Um, they're not as bad now that I live in Hawaii as they were when I lived in Oregon. When I lived in Oregon, the only thing that would help was a cream by Mary Kay. Um, one of the problems with that is that Mary Kay is now testing on animals, so I cannot use them anymore, or I will not use them. And so, and it's all because they want to sell in China. China's a big market. Companies want to sell there. China requires that companies test on animals, their beauty products that they be tested on animals, so companies test on animals. There's no reason for it. I don't know why China does it. Um, I haven't gotten into the politics of it, but it seems outdated and out, I don't know, it, it just, it's horrific. And I will not support a company that does test on animals, so I cannot buy Mary Kay anymore. That being said, if they ever do stop testing on animals, I would go back to them because I did like them. You know, there are a couple like that. Mac, you know, I loved Mac as well, and they do test on animals, so I will not use them. I I just cannot be wearing makeup and, you know, like mascara and blush and look my poor little beagle dog in the face knowing that his relatives have died just so that I can wear that it's just not right 
Okay, so my tirade is over. Um, okay, so for my elbows, the thing that I've found recently is Soap and Glory hand food. And um, this is a doable second to the Mary Kay lotion. And I'm about out of it, so I'm gonna have to get some more um, in another month or so. And I just put a little dab on my elbow. So, you know, if you have a tough spot this might be something for you. Basically, it's experimentation. I mean, it took me three years to come upon this one. You know, after I stopped using the Mary Kay, you know, it's just trying to find something that would work. One of the other things I used is a honey cream. And right now I have Egyptian Magic. Before this, I had a different brand. And for the life of me, I can't remember the name of it. I know I bought it at Whole Foods. If I went to Whole Foods and looked at the shelves, I could pick it out. I could say, that's it, that's the one I had. But for the life of me, I can't remember what it is. Um, so, um, but I, I wanted to try the Egyptian Magic because I heard rave reviews about it. Quite honestly, I like the other one better. This is okay, but the other one was better. Um, if you're vegan, this isn't going to work because it's basically honey and bee pollen in here. Uh, but it does work. It's greasy, so I would just use it at night. But for the really rough, dry spots, it, it does work. Um, I also have the vitamin E cream. Uh, this one is fruit. Fruit of the Earth, sorry. Uh, Fruit of the Earth, I actually found these at Walmart. They come in a two pack um, for less than $5. And this is what was recommended, pseudo recommended for the rough breast after radiation or during radiation. What happened is they gave me a list of creams. None of them were cruelty free and on the back page it said if you prefer a more natural, you know, organic approach, you can do the vitamin E cream or um, natural aloe vera, aloe, aloe, I can't say it, natural aloe. Um, so I found the vitamin E cream. I couldn't find the natural aloe without going to Whole Foods and paying a small fortune for it. Um, but again, quite honestly, I used maybe a quarter of the tub, a third of the tub maybe, and I've still got the other tub and I'm finding that other stuff kind of works just as well or better. Um, this is probably good while you're going through the radiation, while you're going through the radiation because of the way the rays affect you, I would not try anything different. Um, there are certain things that will affect your skin when the, you know, because of the rays. So this is a good thing to have. After the radiation was done, I started using Manoy Tiki Taha, Manoy Tiki Tahiti. It sounds like an odd choice. Um, basically, it's an oil. It, uh, I don't know if you can see any of that. Um, but this stuff, this is like my go-to beauty product. This is the one that I don't want to live without. I have not had to use a neck cream since I found this stuff. I, I put this on at night. I put it on my elbows. I put it up my arms. I put it on my neck. Décolleté. Decolletage, decollete. I didn't take French in high school. Um, and aside from the fact that it smells just wonderful, oh, I have two of them. I have the vanilla and I have the tiare, which is gardenia, which is my favorite scent. Um, and they both just smell awesome. Wow, they're really loose today. Uh, they're made with natural oil, they're all natural. So 
um, they do congeal when it gets cold <laughs> and they're harder to use. You have to really break them up and, um, ooh. okay. Um, so those are like wonderful all around oils for your skin. I would only use them at night though, or after sun. Um, that's a good time to use them as well. When I had my little sunburn this last week, I was putting it on the sunburn. It felt so good. My favorite all around lotion is the Alba Extra Emollient. I use this on my legs and my arms and this stuff is like, you, you put it on and it just feels good all day. It's um, emollient. Um, I'm not sure if you can use this on your breast during the, the radiation or not. I stayed away from it because it wasn't on that list and one of the problems with that list is it didn't say what ingredients you needed to stay away from, if you needed to stay away from dyes and perfumes or if you needed to stay away from certain chemical ingredients. So that's why I went with the natural vitamin E during the radiation. Um, but this is a good, good all-around cream. Um, it just really soaks into the skin and really does a great job. And you know, and I have this huge bottle, and it's down to here. This is my second bottle. I bought the first one just because of the price point. Um, it was only a couple dollars more than the little bottle that was like a third of the size. And I thought, I'm never going to use this big bottle. It's going to sit around for five years and I'll finally throw it out. And I think it was gone within a year. And so then I had to repurchase. Um, but because I do use different lotions for different things, it does last longer than if I used it, what this one lotion all the time. And then for hands, which we've talked about in another video, um, Anything with shea butter, I think that that's been my my findings. Um, these are just little ones that I got at um, Bath and Body Works, which I think I said Bath and Body Shop in my whole previous video. Bath and Body Works. Um, so this one is Tiare. This one is called Sleep. With this one, I. Put it on my arms and across my chest at night before I go to bed and the scent is just kind of calming and soothing and yeah I'm about halfway out of that one now um, the tiara is nice my favorite was the vanilla bean one that I bought at Christmas time and when the last time I went I did not see it on the shelf so I don't know if it was a seasonal or if they just didn't have it uh, they didn't have the other one that I wanted, which um, they have a line. They're these um, kind of aromatherapy line, and one is called Calm, and it has a patchouli vanilla scent, which I love. And so that's what I was looking for, and they didn't have it. Uh, the one last thing is my lips. My lips have been so dry and if you remember in one of my videos I had you know big chap lips that were, were getting really red and bad and I got the bag balm which I forgot to bring over um, but I had bag balm which I used and that helped for the big the really bad chapped lips the like the when you they get wind chapped but on a daily basis it does not work and in fact I had a little tube of the bag balm that's fine if you're going to use it every day do not buy that little tube and expect to stick it in your purse and just use it whenever because it goes rancid <laughs> mine lasted probably about a month and then it started just smelling really bad and so I you know haven't used it since then um, but so I would not recommend it if unless you're going to use it all the time but if you just want to have it around don't get the little tube look for the little tin um, some places have them they're little one ounce tins 
I couldn't find the one ounce tin. I had to get the big, I think it's a five ounce tin, which is huge. And, um, but that worked fine for the big chapped lips. On a daily basis, my lips are dry. They've always been dry. I can't wear lipstick because they're dry. I've never found a lipstick that will actually moisturize my lips. Um, Vaseline is the only thing that works. I've been using this stuff since, I don't know, seventh grade. And I've tried, you know, I feel like I'm addicted to it. I, I've tried going without it and it, I, I can't do it. I mean, my lips just get all dry and patchy and everything. And I've tried other products. Nothing works like this does. Other products leave my lips dry and patchy. There is nothing that moisturizes like this. And I don't know why I'm, you know, other people will say, oh, this lip, this lipstick is so moisturizing and this lip gloss just, you know, it hydrates my lips. And with me, it's like my lips just soak out all the moisturizer within the first two minutes and it's done. And so that's why I don't wear lipstick. But so that is the final step in my routine, I think. I think I've covered everything. <laughs> if not, I'll let you know if I discover there was something else in there. Um, that's, you know, when you break it down, that's a lot of product. I, I don't realize that I'm using that much when I'm actually using it, but to see it all piled up on my table here, wow. No wonder I'm broke. Okay, so, like I said, moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. That is the one thing you can do. And you have to find the product that works for you, you know. Um, sometimes it takes a while, you know, like in the case of my elbows, taking years to find something to replace that Mary Kay cream. And... You know, and I'm kind of still on the hunt, too. If there's something else I find that works better than that, then this is gone and that's in. Um, so, I think I'm always kind of on the hunt for something else that's bigger and better. Well, maybe not bigger, but something else that's better. I don't think there's a perfect product out there other than my Minoy Tiki. But... That's it. So if you have any questions or if there's anything that you want me to talk about, comment down below or send me an email. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Hit that notification bell if you haven't. And hit the like button on the video. Aloha!